It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday night primetime. With a December snow blanketing much of the Midwest and Northeast, what a perfect time to be in the Sunshine State as we welcome you to TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. Tonight we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it, but there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticism. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is prove every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now Browning. Man open, that's Jamal Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw Browning. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. I don't see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Browning. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play there on the catch and run. 30 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Off play action, Browning. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. 
couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. And yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Looking to throw. Browning. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you're at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 0. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. So after the main field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and doing everything in his power to follow through. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. So from the 26-yard line, here's second down and eight. Now Lawrence. They'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Well, they obviously read man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. This one complete to Christian Kirk, and he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll run for the first time with Travis Etienne. And able to steer clear of that first tackler as he works his way forward for about four. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now. Etienne once more. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. 
Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. Third and five, as they've got it as we resume action. Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Out of his hands quickly to Higgins. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here now, third and a yard. Operating from the gun. Brown work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. I've got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. Operating from the gun. Browning. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, you have no talk about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there's no way that ball was going to be caught. And the Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Back to throw. Browning. That is caught. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Well, here's a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll look to throw it off play action. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A great play there. 27 yards. And the Bengals are able to add on to that lead. 
Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. But sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? Just go long, man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. To the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked by Logan Wilson. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Well, the timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. T. Higgins out on offense with the rest of his teammates for this next drive. Last drive, the touchdown, four catches. Really good. He was. They were not good on the other side trying to stop him. What do they need to do? Well, this is where the entire staff has to get involved because we always focus on the defensive coordinator. But he needs help from other people with their eyes and their expertise, and he needs to listen to them. And sometimes you just can't afford to wait on a drive and say, okay, let's get to the sidelines and start over. You need to find a way in the middle of that drive to start taking away what's hurting you. Yeah, in-series adjustments, and how do you do that? Well, what you do is you listen to what everyone else is telling you, what they're seeing, the patterns that are developing, and maybe you just start running extra bodies to take away that particular player. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Looking to throw. Browning, pass thrown right back to Joe Mixon. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? So first and 10 now from the 30. Operating from the gun, Browning. And that's going to be caught, T. Higgins. And he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, two is not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. To throw again on second down. Browning. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Tight end Irv Smith, the intended receiver. But now it's third down. They'll look to throw again. 
He's got his target. That's complete. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half. Unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well. Creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. And here you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart and not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, but we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side to play mistake-free football the rest of the way. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. On the counter, ETN, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Here's a second and eight. Another tote for ETN. 
Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. That pass caught by Kirk. And he will have a Jaguars first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 28, it's second and five. Lawrence now off the bootleg. He'll get this out to the flat for ETM. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. On the heels of a five yard run. Good enough for the first. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense have other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. Looking to throw Lawrence. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone is hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They go play action with Lawrence. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. The kick by McManus is good. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half.
Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. A second and ten, fourth coming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. To throw, Browning. Short throw to Smith. He'll be dropped shy of the 40 despite powering through the tackle. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. Now third down and seven. Now Browning. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Bengals bring out their punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Taking it about the 16. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Balled at the 26, second and seven. Now Lawrence to throw. He completes it to Ridley. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, Lawrence toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Now Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And now they're in the hurry-up. Again, it's Lawrence. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Jags first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Now, well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. 
While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Lawrence will throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was right for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Here's Lawrence. Going for the deep ball. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. 37 yards, and the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. And, we, and now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, moving on the field. Stands. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he puts it through. They're within three. It's 13 to 10. So that drive goes eight plays. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And the Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got no thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Here's Browning. Here's Higgins out of the right side. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third and two, Browning. This is going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. 
The Bengals bring out their punter now. As he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. Here's first and ten. Throwing now, Lawrence. Able to find Jones. And he's going to step out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And this is one of those gotta have the drives. You can't start much better than that. Big yardage there. And just as important, he's able to get out of bounds. And now, that changes everything. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Back to throw. Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Bigsby. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Let's see if he can get it to your running back. See if he can make someone miss in the open field. Here comes second down at five. Here's Lawrence. Now in the middle, and it's complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the ten, and mark him at the five. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit, because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. Here we go, first and goal. Lawrence. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked by Logan Wilson. And the Bengals have just about shown up this football game. Just when you thought this game might be turned on its ear, a late interception pretty much going to seal the deal. Yeah, boy, talk about having your backs to the wall. This defense, they look like they were in danger of surrendering this lead, but they knew they needed that one play. And they got it right there, partner. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got a plane to catch. We got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he will have a Bengals first down. And it's celebration time on that sideline. And they've earned it. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, 
a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Uh, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They play turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football that led to the victory.